Now, people talk about Delivery Hero, or rather, they talk about unicorns these days. You know, and you basically are a unicorn. You're a, you're a three billion dollar valuation unicorn, aren't you? How does that feel? I, I, I don't measure success necessarily by I don't know, the valuation of our business. I, I've measured by how many people actually serve and the number of countries and the impact that we're having. Uh, but of course, it feels good. It's, 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 it, it feels good that. that Do you know, I love it that. when entrepreneurs give incredibly diplomatic answers. <laughs> <laughs> we don't really care about our valuation. We care about serving our customers. I can't. I don't go to work, bed at night thinking about how much money I've made uh, and what yacht I'm going to buy. No, I'm being unkind. You're you're a very humble man. You're actually a very nice man, I think. Um, <laughs> but you you are you're working with some big companies like I mean. Rocket Internet now supposedly work, owns about 40% of, of Delivery Hero, roughly. Uh, run about, yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you for confirming that. Um, what is, do you feel like you're owned by Rocket Internet? No, we don't. And, and that was very important when we took them on board. I, I have a very good relationship with, with Ali and Rocket. I think they have been very great as shareholders. But it was very important for us that we took them on board as actually coming as a shareholder, as, as an investor. Yeah. Um, and we think that can add a lot of value as an investor. But what we, what we, value do, they think you, do you think they can add apart from money? Uh, so, so I think I know, they have been looking at a lot of business models. They've seen what works, what doesn't work. They, they understand the, the concept of investing into the future. They have a very long-term vision, uh, which we also do. Um, they they I know, obviously know a lot of I know, how to run businesses. I know, they have been successful in doing it. We run it differently. Uh, we run it very differently. Do you run it differently that. to the way they would run a business? It, it completely. I know, we, we Does that mean you don't throw chairs at people? <laughs> no, we don't throw chairs. I'm not sure if they do really? either, but uh, uh, no, we, we try to build a really cool culture where we... Uh, and I, 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 Not sad that they are not having a cool culture. I don't want to comment on their culture, but we built this business without having Rocket as a shareholder, uh, and we've been very successful doing so. And we believe in the culture I've built. We believe in the way we work. Um, as we took them on board, we want to continue on that path rather than changing the direction. So. Okay, right. Let's let's go back now. So, by the way, is there any organisers here who are going to give me a time stamp, like how long I've got or whatever? Yeah. Just like well, yeah, when I got five minutes or something, or five or ten. Um, uh, you started. A, I was reading up about you, and you uh, started a pizza delivery business. You've been in the delivery business for a while, right? I've been in online food ordering, so I'm not yeah. sure if it's right that I started a pizza delivery company. We started an online food ordering platform in Sweden back in 2007. Right. Uh, so a similar concept, but it was very much on bootstrapped. And I was I was sleeping on the couch at friends' places when we started new uh, countries. I was. And I, I slept in the office and I had my air mattress and all that. So I've done the complete bootstrap. I know how it's like. Um, at some point, we realized that business is not scalable. It was still a good business and yeah. it got acquired at some point. Um, but we realized opportunity and I realized opportunity of the global space and uh, therefore set up Delivery Hero um, with that background and that knowledge, which was then not the bootstrap business. So do you feel that you've taken your bootstrapping culture and put it into... Put it into uh, I, Delivery Hero? I, I, I do think that we're very careful about money. And, and people would say, like, whoa, you have, you have raised so much money and you're buying these companies. But I think still the culture of, of me and where I come from is still I hate to, to, to waste money. I, I, I don't know, it's the worst I can see. If you waste money, it's just terrible. So therefore, I think that it's in the culture that everything we do, every euro we invest, we really want to make sure that we get a return on it. And I think that's why also a lot of investors have invested in us because we know that we're not doing stupid shit, uh, but we're actually invested where, where it actually adds value to the business. How many people do you employ now? About 2,000. Globally? Globally. Because you're in... Excluding 21, delivery 21 countries? Well. Uh, in, in 34 by now. 34, um, sorry. 34. And, and 73,000 restaurants you deliver from, or is it uh, we, we probably have more than double now. Um, so, so, so about 140,000? Something like that. Good, okay, 140. And um, don't, uh, do you feel like, I mean, there were other companies who did this kind of food delivery business before. There was Just Eat in the UK. They eventually IPO'd. Um, do you feel like you're a clone of these companies or do you feel like you're, you're innovating in a different kind of a way? 
so, so I think, um, Arne, we started later than Arne, by far later, and yeah. I think they had certain advantages. When we looked at the business and when we built the business, we really knew what we wanted to build. And I think since that point, we have always been, I, I don't know, we feel, and, and, and not to humble me now, but we always felt that we were one step ahead. We always want to do certain things differently. We always want to transform the industry. We always want to make the food uh, better quality, get it faster, door, and, and innovate, while not just being an aggregator with a, a bunch of restaurants, but actually making sure that we, that we add to it. Does and I think there's a long way to go, but that's always been our ambition. Does that include creating your own brands? Supposedly you're going to be launching something called Urban Taste? Yeah. So, what, so you, wanna, you, you don't just want to own the restaurant industry, you want to own, own your own brands in that space as well. So, so there will still be a platform where people can order from independent restaurants. We believe in independent restaurants. We believe in the charm of having a, a local store uh, doing, um, and doing the cooking. Uh, but the urban taste, what we build there is we want to build higher service, better quality food. And most restaurants on our platform don't do... Uh, and do the delivery themselves, but a lot of high quality restaurants don't. So, what we add there is that we add on delivery fleets, uh, we add better packaging, uh, we add the top quality, the, the, the trendier restaurants, making sure that you can actually get better food. Uh, so, urban taste so would then be high quality. From restaurants out there, you're not owning a restaurant yourself. No, we, we, right. we, we want to keep the charm of having it's local. We don't want to be a Domino's, we want to be a. So, it's uh, more like putting your own branding over something. Exactly. So, so a place where people can make sure that they get good quality food delivered fast. How much of this is real technology? I mean, is it, is it more business model stuff? Is it more sort of MBA school stuff? Or is, it, is there real technology behind what you're doing? I, I think the success to this point has been very much on the business side, to, to be frankly honest. I, I, I wish I could say differently. But I think it has been us knowing the business model, us expanding very fast. Uh, we have done acquisitions also. Uh, we, we, we don't really want to. We either prefer building ourselves. But in order to have an impact, we need size. Uh, in order to uh, give the service that we want, we need size. So therefore, it has been a first step of the, the curve. is more getting that size and, and making sure we raise enough capital and so on. I think the second phase we're coming in now, which is way more the technology side, so we're building our POS system, cashier system, so that we can have direct integration with the restaurants. Um, we can have delivery fleet tools. We have delivery f team that optimize the route tracking, GPS tracking. Uh, we have a, a separate big data team uh, making sure that actually you get the best restaurant on the top and so on. So let, let's, let's, Nicholas, <laughs> let's be honest. You raised $600 million in this year alone. So surely you're going to use that money to acquire other companies. Anybody else here got a delivery startup they might want to <laughs> sell? Put your hand up. Might be a good opportunity. Um, <laughs> You're just going to, surely you're going to, this is a roll-up strategy, isn't it? So, That's what you so raise that kind of money for in the first so, place. Yeah, so, so I think Arnold, that was very important to build a size. A size. Uh, if, if you look at us now, we, we make uh, about 10 meals delivered every second, 24 hours a day. Um, so, so we have the size, we have around 150. 10 meals a second? 10 meals a second is 24 hours a day. 24 hours a day. Is that an average? So or? That's average. So that yeah. means average through the day. So, so we already have the size. I think... And it can still be more consolidation, it might still be used, but I think if we invest and acquire, we rather want to acquire very early, and we rather want to acquire smart people, team, technology, that can actually go from where we are now to being a, a technology leader in Europe. In a globally. way, I mean, if you're going to do more of a tech play now from here on in, and there's obviously, I, you know, I presume some level of scaling up and roll up and potential acquisitions, um, wouldn't you do something, deliver something other than food? What about delivering other things? So, Kittens so, or something. <laughs> so, um, our, our focus has always been on food. Drugs. Uh, no drugs. Um, our, our focus has always been on food. I don't know, we want to make sure that, that we keep Weed. that focused. <laughs> Neither. <laughs> so, so Very high valuations in the US for weed delivery, I guess. Yeah, I heard that. And Peter Thiel is entering. Yes. Uh, so, so maybe a good thing, but so but you, you, but yeah, would you go into other seriously though? Would you? No, I think our focus will be on food, and I think there's so much more to expand on food. I know we still don't have the high quality food. We still don't have, I um, know, getting food delivered from better places. Um, it, it, it could even be like prepared so you can cook it yourself. I know it, it will be food. 
uh, and it will be instant delivery food. Uh, so we're not going to do it tomorrow, uh, get a package of, of HelloFresh food. It will be uh, instant delivered food. Uh, and I think there is a lot more to be done in that sector and, and that space and that vertical. Um, so uh, you've got all these employees. I mean, I mean, the title of this talk was about sort of, you know, scaling up and being big and stuff, which, frankly, I wanted to talk about something else. But um, just on that note, uh, uh, you've got all of these employees. I mean, do you actually have an employee culture as such, or do you, or is it more like hitting the numbers and go, go, go? Or, I mean, what, what, do, what kind of things do you do? Do you have, like, meditation days? <laughs> you know, the, the, does the, suddenly the food deliveries go, go down and people are like, I want pizza. What are these guys doing? We're, we're having a meditation. <laughs> we're meditating. What, I mean, what, what are you going to do? I, I, I think we have a culture where we are, we are very number driven, but we are also very, um, um, we give a lot of autonomy to the team uh, and we give a lot of responsibility. So that means that people set their own agendas, people work hard because they want to achieve something. Uh, and, and that's the culture we believe in. I think it's the long term, the only way to build a successful company is to make sure you, you build the culture where people really care and people really want this to be successful. And therefore, we have to build that autonomy and people's ab ability to, to take action. At the same time, we have a very uh, data driven culture. So making sure that we can actually guide and support and so on. Uh, otherwise, you end up also in a bit of chaos if you don't have the direction, you don't have the data to follow up. But I, I, I think we have built a, a culture which is more passionate around what we do. One of the problems with European startups over the last, well, 15 years, really, is founders creating companies and really keeping the share options to themselves, keeping the equity to themselves, and not distributing it amongst employees. I mean, the the receptionist at Facebook became a millionaire. The, the guy who did the graffiti on the wall at Facebook's first IQ, uh, HQ ended up earning $780,000, $700 million or something crazy. Yeah. I mean, why do European entrepreneurs not share the wealth with their staff, and do you? Right, so I think in European measures we do, but compared to US, we, we don't. And I think uh, the differences that we have is, I know, first of all, I think that the the, the way uh, the legislation and the... Um, so you blame the, the government? I, I, I do to a certain degree. Angela it's, Merkel. It's, I know, first of all, it's impossible to give shares to a company because they can block anything in a company. Just one share can already make a lot of damage. Um, so so it's, it's very hard to give out... So we out need to change stock. the law. I, I think we have to do something. Uh, so therefore, we start with our virtual shares. So, so we have virtual share in our company and stock up in programs and so on. So that's possible. Uh, but of course, it's a very high tax. And I also think the other thing, I think, is the, the culture of, of Germans. We, we, we like cash. Uh, and Americans are probably more like, I want to have the upside. I, I, I want this to be big. Mm. Partially because they've seen They so like many a good successful. salary over options. And uh, Germans, I think, rather prefer to get the cash in the hand rather than the potential in the future. Um, and so if the law is shit, why don't you move the company to a better jurisdiction, like London? So, <laughs> so uh, I, I, I think we have too much roots here to, to, to do something like that. But uh, I, I, I Too do many investors here as well. Uh, we do have investors here as well, but most investors are... are, are Still from US, I think, or at least in the number. Uh, you haven't actually announced many of your investors, have you? Um, the, we have announced just a recently. Bunch of them. The, there was a whole big bunch of your investors, but you didn't say who yeah. they were. So no, we haven't. We haven't. Were, yet you, were they shy or something? Uh, <laughs> they, they had a they have a policy that that uh, they will not. But I, I think it will become public very soon. Um, but yeah, so perhaps so you can tell you? me later in the bar. Uh, if, if, uh, I won't <laughs> tell anybody. <laughs> Let's see, yeah. I'm just a journalist, exactly. don't worry. Seven million people will know. <laughs> so, um, what about, um, you know, you, there's lots of other companies in this space. You know, you're, there's Deliveroo, Deliveroo in the UK, for instance. Um, you know, how are you going to be different from those guys? I mean, what, what, is, what is really your special source, as it were? Ha <laughs> ha. Right, so... so um, um, and I, I think always trying to be the lead, I know, making sure that we can actually deliver food faster, that we have better restaurants, making sure that we have a, a product that uh, works. The same way they want to be better than us, I know, we, we want to be better than them. Um, I think the advantage that we have is that we probably have a bit more scale, so um, we can actually become 
um, more efficient in the way we do delivery. And therefore, we can actually be better for the customer because we will be way cheaper. If you look at delivery in the UK, it's, it's really expensive. I don't have to pay extra. The restaurant is paying very high commission. We don't have to charge a lot of commission. We don't have to charge 25%. We can be profitable way less. We don't have to charge the customer five pounds. We can actually charge nothing and, and still be profitable on it. Or Isn't very that little. because you've raised a lot of um, money? No, we will still we will still make sure that we get profit on that order, even if it's very marginal, but a small profit. Then I'd rather go from scale and make a profitability from there. Um, that's that's how we think about it. Um, what's the secret to raising all this money? Is it just being friends with Oliver somewhere? Uh, so, so I think we raised a lot of money before uh, Ali came on board. Lukas um, Gadowski, guys like that. I mean, yeah, but, I, I mean, I, is it, are you just an incredibly persuasive individual? No, I, 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 I no? don't. I, 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 th I think we, we as a company have been good at explaining what we do, what we invest in and why that will make a return. Uh, so very early on, we already knew the business model, we knew what we wanted to build, and we have been very lucky hitting our plans, which gives confidence for the next round. But we started off in a seed round of, of 1.3 million. It's a, it's a lot of seed round, uh, but, but it's, still not, it's still not 500 million. Um, and then we raised a Series A of 4 million, and then we managed to raise a, a 25, and then we managed to raise 100 million. So we've always taken the small step up there, and, and every single time I managed to hit what we promised, and, and that's why people have trusted us putting more money in. So the secret really was basically delivering, literally, <laughs> on your on your ta on your targets, I think so, and also have a clear clear understanding of your business model. Uh, I, I think that was a key for us. Uh, I think it's different for different companies, but that was what we were good at. We we could really explain how this would work out, and and then we was it also happened to to be that way, uh, which then gave confidence for the next financing and so on. Who do you think who who would you name as the best uh, investors in Europe? I mean, obviously, you would name the ones that you <laughs> have invested in you. Sure. I mean, who, do you, who else do you think is good out there? I, I, I couldn't comment. I'm, I'm, I'm it, very honest. I'm very focused on what we do. And, and of course, I think the investors you don't. You never read us. TechCrunch? Uh, never read they, all the other investors? I, I, I think if you look at the ones that we have, and we have uh, 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 Holdspring and Tengamal and Point9, uh, we're investors. And I think Point9 is a great, is the, probably the best seed investor you can have. Um, I think they're just really smart in understanding what works and what not. So in the seed round, I think they're very good. And now they're also expanding to do Series A and so on. So I think that's a, a top, top notch investor in the early stage. I think uh, Hallspring and Tengma have been very successful, have uh, done some very good bets. Um, some of them rocking companies, but a lot of them also in, in companies like ours. Mm. Uh, so, so I think they have done a great job. Uh, What's the benefit of being, you're still a private company, some of your competitors have IPO'd, like Just Eat. I mean, uh, I presume you, you see that as being an advantage. You can make decisions pretty fast. Yeah, we, we, we like to be uh, private as long as we, um, as long as we don't feel like the strategy fits with a public market strategy. And, and we don't want to think about the next quarter's uh, EBITDA and earnings. We want to make sure that we build the 10 years EBITDA um, and do the right for the moment. And as long as we're in a moment when we actually want to invest and, and take those decisions, if you feel like now, the comp now we have to put another 10 million into this market or we have to put 10 million into more to tech, we want to be able to take that decision immediately and not feel like, ooh, this will hurt the next earning call. Um, so, you so actually live in Zurich, don't you? Why don't I, you live I, in Berlin? Um, so so I, I have my family there uh, since uh, almost 15 years back. Um, so... so so you kind of like to see the family? Yeah, of course. Uh, so I have my child there. I don't have my parents are back in, 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 in Sweden, but I have my, my wife and I have my child there. Um, we, we, we like it very much. I think it's very good for me also to have a very focus because I work a lot. Uh, but this way I so can when work you, a lot Monday to Thursday. When you fly in on Monday, uh, boom, you're working. Yes. Do you work 24-7? How do you work? I... I, I probably work at 18, 20 hours a day when I'm in Berlin, and uh, then I, I... Then you go home and order from Delivery Hero. Have a, have a, then yeah. you go home and order from your own company, right? Uh, yeah, I do. I actually order more from here in Berlin, uh, so a lot of lunches and so on, uh, and dinners from, from our service, Lieferhull and, and Pizza D, uh, and soon Urban Taste, which I'm very much looking forward to. When you hire people, what do you ask them? 
Oh, um, I don't know. For me, what is what you look for. Um, I, th I, th I think there are two aspects. One is you start out. Do they have a capacity and capability? Um, but 50% of the decision, and the both has to work also on the culture. And it need to feel like this person is just having the drive. He has the will. He wants to be part of this. He, 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 and that is just something that, that passionate me. I'm a very passionate person myself. And, and I, I just like when people just have that passion, that, that, that glint in their eye and that eagerness to, to, to be part of something. So I'm very weak for that. And, but of course, the, I don't know, the, the, the capability is more. Uh, so therefore, Technical knowledge is also important, but but that you can always learn. If you're if you're smart and you you have that that drive and will, then you learn. So you've raised all of this money. I'm sure you're going to be going and acquiring all these lovely people out here. Um, at some point, uh, you you're building the company. What what do you see? Where do you see delivery here in the next five years? Basically, being a you know a ubiquitous brand like Coca-Cola or something globally. Uh, I don't think that it, from a brand, that's not what I think of. I, I, I do want to be the global leader in online food and space. I think we're already there. We, we deliver 50 or 60% more orders than, than our biggest competitor. Uh, we have four times more restaurants than our biggest competitor. But, uh, so that's one. But the two other things is uh, I just want to have a product that we really feel like I'm proud of. And I, I, at some point, I want to look back at what we built and feel like, that is just a really cool product. I, I really build a product with a kitchen in the, your pocket where in seconds can order good food delivered. It could be healthy, it could be unhealthy, whatever. But I can get what I want in seconds and I get delivery in, in shortly. And I, I want to have that product and feel proud of well, it. Well, you, you know, you strike me as being... the third being the company. Feel like you have just a, a company. strike me as just being far too nice to be, <laughs> to be in this cutthroat <laughs> billion, $3 billion valuation game. I'm, uh, I, I'm like, but it's nice to see that some nice guys do well. So it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much, Nicholas. Thank you very much. Okay.